So, what makes Attack on Titan so special? Is it really overrated? Let's talk about the story. Is Attack on Titan a story of a protagonist who wants to achieve the impossible and he finally does it? Yes, it is. But kinda. Or is it a story of a psychopath criminal who wants to save the world by his own evil judgment? Or is it a story of how an evil entity, an evil power, an evil government, an evil organization, an evil bunch of people, you get it now, they are trying to manipulate and run the world in their own evil scheme and on their own evil way? Or is it a story of a cult leader who finally stands up, who finally stands up to evil and he tries to defeat evil with evil? Or it is a story of an evil power, an evil entity who is trying to dictate, trying to conquer the whole world while the only goal is to stop it. Or maybe it is a story of betrayal. Like how you grew up with someone, how you planned on conquering with someone and that particular someone that you trusted was your enemy the whole time. He betrays in the end. Or it is a story of love, how two lovers can love each other so much but in the end they cannot be together due to the cruelty of this world. So basically Attack on Titan has every aspect of story told which all the successful animes have. It is actually a story of part by part of different successful animes told in one anime. In short, many super hits animes have a good story and Attack on Titan has almost all of that aspects in it or almost every story that were told in that anime in it. So when it comes to storytelling, Attack on Titan kills it, nails it perfectly like the author props to you Aisyama. Now guys, let's talk about the anime universe. The best thing about watching an anime is that anything is possible. Anything. Because the writer can put his imagination, every fiber of his imagination into a living idea. Like through an anime, a writer can literally show exactly from each and every detail what he wants us, the audience, to see. So what I'm trying to tell you is that I really love how it was about protecting the civilians from titans through walls. How in the beginning the titans were the enemy. How the whole concept of titan being the enemy and the wall used to protect us but in actuality it was not. It were humans the whole time. Humanity's biggest enemy is humanity itself. Gando Ikari said it, I didn't. The imagination of the universe is really great. The whole concept of the walls, the titans, the finding out of different nations that exist, that different nations that are free, that don't have their freedom taken away by walls or titans. The story of Ymir King Fritz and the whole Attack on Titan world building is really out of this world, like the writer has outdone himself in a good way. We talked about the world, now let's talk about characters. Now come on, like everyone loves Attack on Titan characters, like who doesn't? Iran used to be an uh, annoying little teenager who then became like a super cool badass now. Everyone wants to be Eren Jaeger, like come on, like you looked in the mirror and told Tatakai, Tatakai, Taketakai, at least once, come on, you did, uh, I got you. That's character development, like at first he was just a normal kid, a normal, enthusiastic, passionate, ambitious kid who then turned into a monster, a monster that the society created, a monster 
that the evil government created a, a monster that the whole world the dispute of nations created a monster that racism created and guess what everyone loves that monster Iran everyone loves that sadist that evil part of him <laughs> How he made the huge step, how he was the one to stand up and how he saved his himself, his city that he loved, where he grew up. And also every character and their character character development is also really great. Like how Historia was a really insecure, trying to be nice girl who actually turns out to be a badass woman until she finds herself and she says like fuck a few world it has badass levi like come on you cannot like dislike levi everyone loves him everyone likes him i mean especially the ladies i mean hey levi can you like give me some of your ladies uh, no okay no man like i want you to sit back and think about all the characters like rainer armin mikasa and King Yuri, Kenny, everyone, just think about it. Like how beautifully are they written? Their character development, their story, their past, everything is so well thought of. Like the writer gave thought to each and every character, which is really, like, really tough, and which is rare, rare, pretty rare in any anime, any movie, or anything you will see, any TV series. So the point is that the character and the character development of this anime is outstanding. It's just brilliant and to think of a story in such depth it would have taken Asayama so many years to complete each and every story and to make it to such sheer perfection I mean like it must have taken him years at least. Now that part is done now let's talk about intelligence used in the anime. Now some scenes while some part of this anime the intelligence used just sheer intelligence used by the characters to actually unveil some mysteries is just outstanding. Like you can literally compare the intelligence used in Attack on Titan to the other intelligently written animes like Code Geass, like Death Note, like Neon Genesis Evangelion, The Promised Neverland Season 1. The mind games and the intelligence are point on. This anime is easily one of the most intelligently written anime ever, no doubt. Okay, now let's talk about philosophy, quotes and dialogues. So this anime is literally like one of the most philosophical animes ever. I mean, okay, not one of the most philosophical, but it has some great, great philosophy, really great dialogues, quotes. I really love the part of King Yuri and Kenny. The friendship of King Yuri and Kenny and main thing is the philosophy of King Yuri and this anime has a lot, a lot of great dialogues, great great dialogues and great great quotes. Now let's talk about something new, like what we got to learn from the anime. Now whenever I watch an anime, I learn something new from that anime, that's the most thing. Like my philosophy the way i view at some things just change completely and attack on titan has just done that i mean just think about it attack on titan is a story about how a group of people how a particular group of nations they manipulated media in order to put a island against the world and the reason for it was racism just racism like in real life it happened too when russia was attacking ukraine the russian government is actually manipulating the media in russia they're actually showing that ukraine is attacking them and they are just fighting back but the truth is completely different so it just shows us that how easy it is for these powerful people to manipulate media and there are so many things that we don't even know of and there are so many things we know of that is actually a lie 
like some of the most historical moments history books can be full of lies and be full of manipulation cause it always has been and always will be even the media of now can be manipulated and it showed me that i cannot trust uh, media or any source of mass communication at all next thing it showed us is that a political leader who presents himself to be good in the world like he is the most pure good hearted person ever but in actuality in reality he is an actual piece of shit and that's what it is that's the truth like there are so many politicians in the world that could be just the same way that he was in attack on titan like there can be so many any politician celebrity that present themselves on camera or while going out they they show a different side to them which is the good angel side that each and every one each and every of one of their followers people media they cherish them but in actuality they are not really good person they are they may may be pure evil you don't know what they must have done in their past lives and what their thought process is what the true dark side that they are showing us is really different and one of the most good things about that anime is that it taught me how not to hate a particular country race or any religion whatsoever like it was kind of eye opening if you don't know i'm actually an indian and in india it is a rivalry between the neighboring countries india and pakistan they were actually two separated nations so the rivalry is just intense there it's everywhere around here like normal racism normal kind of national national speaking against other nations that sort of thing is like common here specifically pakistan afghanistan yeah i'll openly admit it it is what it is it is the truth so ever since we were kids we were taught by the society we live in to hate other country why just because a political conflict that's why but the truth is that we don't even know the people of that nation it's like when irania ga said beyond the walls there's a country in which the people are the same some are good people while some are jerks the people are really the same the same in this country and the same in that country the only difference is that we the opposite country we both were taught like in my neighborhood we were taught we were taught to raise hate them in their neighborhood they were taught to hate us and why because of some political bullshit that's going on why would i like why would i hate any any country any race any religion i won't i won't like why i would never n- so this was kind of an eye opener for me but it's a really good lesson which also brings us to another thing that we got to learn from attack on titan and that is the truth behind war see in real life there are honorary soldiers people who think that they dedicate dedicate their life for a particular nation just because they joined an army and they are somewhat respected a lot in society but the actual truth about war armies national conflict is something else and the truth is that these honorary people who defend our country who actually keeps our freedom intact and keep us free and safe in our country that's what we were taught ever since we were kids and that's what we know but in attack on titan it is shown that these armies are just tools they are just tools of war they are just tools of conquering someone else they are just tools of hurting other people what's so honorary about killing someone about killing someone innocent what's so honorary about preparing for a war why can't there be peace if the world whole world took its military budget and used that budget for poverty we wouldn't have any sort of starvation not at all just like in attack on titan i think that it can be true that the whole army thing that the whole military thing can actually in truth in general it could be just a tool a tool for higher power a tool for higher political entity a tool a tool for an entity that we don't even know of cause just like it said 
the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was fooling the world that he didn't exist. This also reminds me of the story of the great Muhammad Ali. Only white people who mean right and in heart want to do right. But there are so few. If 10,000 rattlesnakes was coming down that aisle now, and I had a door here I could shut, and in that 10,000, 1,000 meant right. 1,000 rattlesnakes didn't want to bite me. I knew they were good. Should I let all these rattlesnakes come down, hoping that that 1,000 get together and farm a shield? Or should I just close the door and stay safe? I think that... The, you understand? The I Viet Cong are not all bad, but America's still dropping bombs. In Hiroshima, the Japan wasn't bad, but she still dropped the bomb. In Korea, they weren't bad, but they still dropped the bomb. So now I'm going to forget the 400 years of lynching and killing and raping and depriving my people of freedom, justice, and equality, the first fire, last high, the lowest of low, last respected, and I'm going to look at two or three white people who are trying to do right and don't see the other million trying to kill me. <laughs> I'm not that big of a fool. And I'm not going to so the government kind of forced him to join the army as they were needed and they could use Ali as he was such an elite boxer, he was literally the world champion. But Ali refused to join so they put charges against him as why he's not serving the nation when he could. To which Ali replied, there was actually a lot of heat that was generating against Ali. At that time, he said, why would I kill someone else? Why would I kill my own brother that is living behind other nation's boundary? And why would I do it for some political entity, some, for some political power? Why would I kill someone that I don't even know of? And why would I put my life on the line for a cause for someone that I don't even know of? I wouldn't just go out there and kill someone. That person that who I will be fighting in the war, he didn't call me a nigger. He didn't strip me away from my freedom. He didn't harass me. He didn't abuse me because I was black. He didn't discriminate me. So why would I shred the blood of someone that hasn't done anything to me? They say fight for freedom. While they are the ones that have taken my freedom away and they have been the ones that have been calling me and harassing me. So I will not fight for this evil political leader nor will I shed a single drop of blood from my brothers. That's what he claimed, that's what he said and he didn't fight for the honorary army. And the way I see it, he was 100% right. Inevitably students would challenge Ali on his stand and his convictions. Remarkably, Ali more than held his own against students who had a far better formal education than he. I'm just saying, you're talking about me about some draft, and all of you white boys are breaking your neck to get to Switzerland and Canada and London. I'm not going to help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm going to die, I'll die now, right here fighting you. If I'm going to die, you my enemy. My name is a white people, not Viet Cong, or Chinese, or Japanese. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here. So yeah, this was also one of the deepest things that Attack on Titan taught me. Alright, which brings us to the next thing, and that is relation. Yo, you guys remember how Attack on Titan was about titans killing all the titans, and then it went from a key and a door in the basement, which revealed all the secrets, which then turned into a world being a complete mess, which was run by complete evil leaders, and how our protagonist, antagonist, or whatever you wanna call him, now just wants to destroy it to save his own people or island. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The Revelation. The story was about ending the world from the beginning, but the way the writer reveals it and the way the story completely, the dynamic of the story completely changes is so magnificent. It was like a really good surprise served at the perfect time. It was so very well done and revealed. Like after the revelation, the story completely changed. And that's how you reveal something. That's how you tell a story. That's how you show to the viewers what was the story all about from the beginning. So it just amazes me that how the writer revealed something at the very end of season 3 and then afterwards he completely changes the story and he completely changes the main character. His whole personality, his whole thinking and his whole purpose of life and his whole mission. 
So that is the beauty of revelation and thrill of Attack on Titan and this series also come in, in with lot, lots and lots of thrillers like there were so many moments that were just crazy heart pounding heart beating but this is just perfectly done and that's why this anime is so 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 damn good I said it three times didn't I but come on it deserves it damn now let's talk about emotional scenes. Yeah, this series is a roller coaster of emotional rights. Like some of our most beloved characters dies, Erwin Smith dies, Petra dies, and just to put a nail in the coffin, I won't spoil you, but someone really, let's just say someone dies. I know like Attack on Titan is all about deaths, but those who have read the manga knows what I'm talking about. But those who haven't and those who just watch anime know that Attack on Titan will have the best ending ever written in an anime and it will be also be the most emotional one ever. So the emotions and the story of sadness is also on another level when we are talking about this anime. That's why this anime has been so successful. And that's why we it calling Attack on Titan overrated is really an understatement if you are asking me. Because this anime brings a lot to the table. Like a lot, lot. Yeah, there are two other things that I wanted to talk about and that is the animation like Attack on Titan has one of the best animations out there that we can compare it to that of Jujutsu Kaisen's Demon Slayers and it is in that league. And the next thing that I want to talk about is the soundtracks. Now the music, the way the music is edited and how the music and the sound effects just hit is completely different and it is really good too like very good the orchestral music is really really well done now let's talk about the final thing that makes this anime a really great masterpiece is the fight scenes now if you don't know that this is anime is the only anime which actually uses real fight scenes now i'm not talking about the the blade thing where we fly the scouts they fly and kill the titan no 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 i'm talking about the scenes where titans collide the titans fight yeah so the fight scenes that are shown in this anime they use the real martial art like actual martial art the real world fighting the real world martial arts artists how they fight and how these anime in which the scene this the titan fights is same is really really same similar like in attack on titan it is shown that they use boxing and they use really high level grappling skills which is jiu-jitsu so Isayama knows what he's doing and how the way he creates the fight scenes is really brilliant because this is how you actually fight and it uses real life martial arts and it actually has a very good jiu-jitsu in it. So I'll just end the video right here. Thank you all for watching. If you haven't already clicked the subscribe button, please do it and like this video and send it to one of your friends and thank you very much. See you all later. Peace out. Bye.